to how was Germany able to keep fighting the Second World War till 1945? Well, Germany was cut off from resources and the German factories were continuously harassed by alien bombardments. They managed to keep up the weapon production. And for this, there was one man who had to make sure the German soldiers had weapons to fight with. Who was this man? Well, some people called him a good Nazi after the Second World War. And how did this man manage to keep up arms production? You will find out today. Hey, welcome back regular viewers. And if you're new, welcome to History Hustle. My name is Stefan. I'm a history teacher from the Netherlands. And I like to hustle history for you. And if you liked it as well, then I please consider subscribing and do hit the notification bell to join the hustle. Let's start. In a previous video, I talked about how a great deal of Germans were willing to fight till the end. And why? Because of Nazi terror, everyone was to be kept in line. Because of Soviet terror, many wanted to keep on fighting. The effective bureaucracy kept the system on going. A dedicated officer corps motivated the troops. And the failed July plot led to radicalization of the command structure. In this video, we're going to look at a more material level. See, when you're waging a war, you need people to fight in it. But you also need material to do so. And here I mean weapons. K-98Ks, SDG-44s, Panzerfaust, tanks, airplanes were needed to keep the fighting going. Responsible for this was Albert Speer from 1942, the head of the Reich Ministry of Armament and War Production. Before that, he served as Reich's architect and was for some years a member of Hitler's inner circle. Now Hitler's inner circle was full of power-hungry despots who despised one another. And as the tide of the war changed, these relations became even more poisonous. After the failed July plot, even some people suspected Speer had something to do with it. And this weakened his position. But because of the urge of weaponry, he could keep his position. Whatever the internal struggles he had to undertake in the power jungle of the Third Reich during the phase of its inexorable decline, Speer remained indispensable to Hitler and the regime. Speer argued that the war was technical of nature and that the quality of the arms and the types of weaponry that was used would determine its outcome not the amount of soldiers that were sent to the front. In this war, which is a technical war, a levé en masse is not decisive. And we can see this by the prototypes of many different weapons that were developed at the latter stages of the Second World War. German weapon engineers came up with new fighter planes, with rockets, with tanks, with assault rifles, all to change the tide of war. Some of these weapons only made it to the design phase. Other weapons had a few prototypes built and other weapons were taken into mass production. German propaganda spoke of wonder weapons, like the Reich will one day develop such powerful weapons that the war will be winnable. Yet, Goebbels and Hitler, they argued that it wasn't quality, but quantity. In other words, they wanted as many people to be sent to the front. And we can already see this with the establishment of the Volkssturm, this army formation that consisted of German men that weren't conscripted yet between the ages of 16 and 60. And you can clearly see that this is a quantity thing. And in the end, the Volkssturm was worthless because it consisted of under-equipped, ill-trained men that were not able to change the course of the war, only prolonging it with several months. And now you may ask, but why didn't the Germans put slave laborers in the factories? Well, actually, they did. But the thing is, you cannot solely rely on slave laborers because these slave laborers need to be guarded by armed guards. So at the end, you needed German workers and also German expertise in the factories to keep 
the weapon production going. So here's the catch. Speer wanted the German laborers in the factory to keep the weapon production going. Goebbels wanted those German laborers to be recruited and sent to the front. And this led to an endless tug of war between these two Nazis. Now, Hitler was very impressed by Speer's organizatorial skills. So he, to a large degree, agreed with Speer. We're now in the autumn of 1944. Around that time, German weapon production decreased severely because of the ongoing alien bombing campaigns. Actually, did you know that 60% of the alien bombs dropped on Germany were dropped after July 1944? So think of this, if the Stauffenberg conspiracy was successful, it wouldn't only have saved countless of human lives, but also saved Germany from a great deal of destruction. Production of raw minerals dropped with two-fifths. Because of the bombing of petroleum insulation, there was a drop of two-thirds of the production of jet fuel, which led to a weakened air defense, which led to more damage because of alien bombing campaigns. Attacks on railway systems damaged Germany's infrastructure. Now what is interesting is that despite these enormous and enormous setbacks, Albert Speer managed to keep the weapon production going on on some level. Speer's rapid grasp not just of problems but their possible solution or at least amelioration, his enormous energy coupled with unquestioned talent for organization and the authorization he had to push through changes thanks to his manipulation of his frequent armament briefings with Hitler all contributed to his ability in the autumn 1944 to paper over the widening cracks. In September 1944, Speer has visited the west of Germany. He reorganized transportation systems and where Nazi hardliners issued their soldiers to fight till the bitter end, Speer urged the workers to produce weapons till the bitter end. Therefore he argued that weapon factories shouldn't be evacuated too soon. Even if they were in the front line, they had to keep on production as long as possible. And here is why I find Speer such a fascinating person. Because where many of the hardliners issued that everything had to be destroyed, so nothing of value could fall in the hands of the enemy, Speer was kind of thinking ahead, he was kind of thinking of a post-war Germany, a Germany that would need its factories to rebuild. At the end of September, Speer visited the western part of Germany again and he helped raising morale of the troops that were treated after the Allied breakthrough in France by providing the troops with new weapons. Without Speer's organizatorial skills, his energetic attempts to keep on weapon production and continuous repairing of destroyed infrastructure, the war would have ended sooner. And I know that some of you might say the following, do it look. I've seen your video about these last ditch German weapons where you talk about the Panzerfaust, the Volkssturmgewehr and the Einstassflammenwerfer for 46 and these were all crudely designed, unreliable, inaccurate weapons. So Speer kind of sucked when it came down to this. Alright, what you need to realize right now is that the fact that Speer was able to produce weapons still such a late phase in the war is already an extraordinary achievement. An achievement that prolonged the war and got many people killed. Writing to Hitler near the end of the war, he, Speer, claimed, without my work, the war would perhaps have been lost in 1942-43. He was surely right. His achievements constitute an important element in the answer to the question of how Germany held out so long. Now after the war, Speer claims that he saw that the war was lost in September 1944. Yet, if we look at his actions in that time, well, that doesn't really correspond with the action a man would have taken 
if he thought the war would have been lost. Sure, Speer perhaps had an eye out for Germany after the war. Germany, he could perhaps play a role in. And let us not forget that Speer approved the inhumane conditions of hundreds and thousands of forced laborers. After the war, Speer was among the 24 major war criminals that were tried at Nuremberg. He was found guilty of war crimes and crimes against humanity, mostly for the use of slave labor, but he did not receive the death sentence. Speer always said that he was blinded by Hitler's charisma and that he knew nothing of the exterminations. As a well-mannered, good-looking and intellectual man, he presented himself as a good Nazi. A man that said sorry. But looking at the things I just mentioned and other things that are beyond the scope of this video, that can be considered a myth. If you want to know more about German wonder weapons, you can click right here. And if you want to know more about these last ditch German weapons, you can click right here. Please do not forget to subscribe, to like, to comment and to share Facebook, Reddit, Twitter. Thanks for watching as always and I'll see you later.